Coming up on Mountain News at 530, gas prices are climbing again throughout the Commonwealth. A look at what some drivers in Laurel County are seeing. And the FBI finds more classified material at President Biden's home in Delaware. We'll have the strong reactions from both Republicans and some Democrats on Capitol Hill. And dry weather continues into tomorrow, but rain and even some snow look possible in the region. The latest coming up as Mountain News at 530 starts now. Dedicated to Southern and Eastern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News at 530. Good evening, I'm Steve Hensley. I'm Olivia Calfi. Filling up is once again costing you a lot more. Last week's prices in some parts of Kentucky jumped more than 27 cents in one week. The prices are now back above $3 a gallon in many locations. WIMT's Phil Pendleton spoke to drivers in Laurel County about what they are seeing. Jerry Rice had an important trip to make Monday morning. Driving, though, was his only option. You got to have it, so I, you just got to keep paying it. I mean, it's, it's kind of stinks, but you do have to pay it, you know. Uh, you got to go places. Uh, I'm going to go see my wife in the hospital right now, so I got to get there. He and others were paying $3.19 a gallon Monday. It was almost 30 cents cheaper just a week ago in most places. Experts say prices may keep rising and people fear a repeat of last summer when prices hovered around $5 a gallon. Well, I'm going to get on my motorcycle and it's going to be a little cheaper, that's for sure. <laughs> As we get through the winter and really away from winter, closer to spring and summer, gas experts do not expect the situation to get any better. They say that the experience for drivers at the pump is likely going to get worse. Prices jumped 27 cents in a week and are 41 cents higher than about a month ago, but it could be worse. It's a lot more expensive in some places. You guys are giving it away. We're 489. He says it was more than $7 a gallon in San Diego last year, but it did go down. National experts say the recent hikes are tied to refinery challenges and global supply and demand issues. In Laurel County, Phil Pendleton, WYMT Mountain News. Right now, the national average is about 342 a gallon, with the Kentucky average about 316. Officials with the Dickinson County, Virginia Sheriff's Office are warning folks to be aware of a new trend for stealing fuel out of people's cars, drilling directly into the gas tank. In a Facebook post, deputies warn people to be aware of their surroundings and to report anything suspicious to their office immediately. The post also says police in other counties have reported similar crimes. Well, weather-wise at this hour, we remain rather tranquil. However, we are going to see an increase a little bit later on this week in the potential for some showers and even some snow showers. Look outside right now. You saw more heads all cloudy. The sun now out in downtown Somerset. Temperatures in the low 40s at this hour. We will continue to see those temperatures start to increase as we head further from west to east with that little bit of sunshine we're seeing here right before sunset. But we continue to see temperatures rather chilly across the Kentucky River Valley and the Big Sandy. You see our showers moving on out of the region, our snow showers and even our clouds starting to push out. So as we head through tonight, that's where we'll start to see those temperatures get a little chillier. You see a lot of blue on that map and heading into tonight, we're talking temperatures in the 20s with those calm winds and skies at least partly to mostly clear. In just a few minutes, guys, I'll have the details on when we could return to a little bit of uh, rain or snow in just a few minutes. Olivia. Thank you, Evan. An FBI search of President Biden's Delaware home has turned up even more material with classified markings. The new findings are raising questions from lawmakers about what is going on and who had access to those areas. CBS's Nicole D'Antonio has more from Capitol Hill. House Republicans are demanding to know who had access to President Biden's Wilmington, Delaware home where classified material was being kept. 
The Secret Service maintains it does not keep records of who visits the House. But in a new letter to the agency's director, the head of the House Oversight Committee is demanding law enforcement and criminal justice records generated when people are screened prior to visiting the home. This is going to be crucial, I think, to the special counsel's investigation, is why did the president have these documents? Who did he show them to? More items marked classified were found at the president's Wilmington home on Friday when the FBI searched the residence. During the nearly 13-hour search, investigators poured over personally handwritten notes, files, papers, binders, memorabilia, to-do lists, schedules, and reminders going back decades. The president's attorney says the FBI took six items consisting of documents with classification markings and surrounding materials. The president and his lawyers offered up access, unprecedented access, I should add, to every single room of the president's personal home to ensure that any documents that need to be properly in possession of the government are taken and are in proper possession of the government. It's not just Republicans raising questions as more documents are uncovered. Even some of the president's closest allies say they're frustrated by the ongoing revelations. It's not supposed to happen. Uh, whether it was a, the fault of a staffer or an attorney, it makes no difference. The elected official bears ultimate responsibility. The White House says it is fully cooperating with the investigation. But House Republicans, already critical of the Justice Department, plan to conduct their own investigation. Nicole D'Antonio, CBS News, Capitol Hill. The House Oversight Committee has already launched an investigation looking into the Department of Justice. Lawyers for disgraced and disbarred former South Carolina attorney Alex Murdaugh say they are ready for his murder trial. Prosecutors say Murdaugh killed his wife and his son on the family's property in June of 2021. Murdaugh has denied all involvement in the deaths. His attorney released a statement Sunday night saying they would expose all the, quote, weaknesses in the state's case. Attorneys for both the defense and prosecution have said the trial could last up to three weeks. Abortion rights rallies took place around the country yesterday to mark the 50th anniversary of Roe v. Wade, the Supreme Court decision to legalize abortion. But of course, last June, the high court reversed that ruling, bringing an end to a constitutional right to an abortion. The Women's March organized the nationwide protests yesterday, including one in D.C. and one in Lexington. The Women's March started in 2017 to protest the presidential election of Donald Trump, but this year's march pivoted to address the high court's overturning of Roe v. Wade. A group of counter-protesters who support the right to life also demonstrated. Police kept the two groups apart. The FDA says it wants to simplify how Americans stay up to date on COVID-19 booster vaccinations. The agency says in documents posted Monday, it wants the process to be more like getting a flu shot. That would mean assessing what COVID strands are circulating in June and then preparing a dose for the fall. The FDA says the plan is to create a single annual shot to bolster immunity for most people, but those with certain risk factors might need two. The FDA's Vaccines Advisory Committee is set to meet Thursday to discuss the plan. This week marks the beginning of Lunar New Year celebrations around the world. It's the most festive time of the year in China, especially this year after nearly all COVID restrictions were removed for the first time since 2020. And it's all happening after the country is seeing a huge spike in COVID cases. CBS's Elizabeth Palmer has more. In his New Year video address, President Xi Jinping admitted that China's COVID surge had been fierce and fast. That's no understatement. A top Chinese epidemiologist estimates 80% of China's population has now been infected. That's more than a billion people, most since the start of December. Chinese health officials have confirmed just under 80,000 COVID deaths, but Western analysts think that's a wild understatement. We expect that the number of deaths will uh, peak in around one week ahead and it will reach uh, the uh, one million mark, so one million of total deaths uh, uh, at the end of this month. We may never know the real toll, especially as Chinese doctors are under pressure not to list COVID on death certificates. Over the past week, millions of Chinese city dwellers traveled home to villages and towns for the Lunar New Year. There were concerns they might take the virus with them, setting off a second lethal wave. The CBS team headed to the provincial city of Zhao Tong, 
Shooting covertly, as COVID is a sensitive subject, they found the virus had arrived some time ago. One woman explained her mother had tested positive, and a man waiting said, oh, almost everyone around here has tested positive, like 80%. It does appear that China's COVID outbreak has peaked and is starting to decline. If that's true and the economy starts picking up, the new year is indeed off to an auspicious start. Elizabeth Palmer, CBS News, Tokyo. An Iranian-American wrongfully imprisoned in Iran has ended a seven-day hunger strike. Siomak Namazi wrote a letter to President Joe Biden announcing the strike last week. He said he wanted President Biden to think of him each day, one for each of the seven years since he was left out of a prison swap between the U.S. and Iran in 2016. Namazi lost 10 pounds during the hunger strike and his blood pressure spiked. He says he did it to bring attention to the case and two other Americans wrongfully detained in Iran. Coming up on Mountain News at 5.30, thinking about doing some home improvements, what you need to know before you plan your next project. Plus, sunshine continues tomorrow, but things are literally looking rather cloudy after that. The breakdown on the way. WIMT News app offers alerts on breaking stories as